In the previous video, we saw how a redwood viscometer can be used in order to determine the viscosity of an oil at a range of different temperatures. And in the top left hand corner, we have the data from that experiment. So we found the viscosity in redwood seconds at three different temperatures, and then we created and used a conversion graph in order to determine the equivalent kinematic viscosities. What we're going to do in this video is see how we can take those values of kinematic viscosity at three different temperatures and produce a graph so that we can determine the kinematic viscosity at any temperature. So this is a relatively straightforward process. All we need to do is produce a scatter graph and we're going to produce a scatter graph of our temperature against our kinematic viscosities. Note that the graph type that you need to use is scatter graph because that's going to plot those two sets of data against each other. We're going to start just with the dots, like so. So let's name this graph kinematic viscosity. And let's also add some axis labels. So on the x axis is our temperature in degrees Celsius. And on our y-axis is our kinematic viscosity. And that's measured in millimeter squared per second. So in order to make this graph useful, we're going to add a trend line, and we're going to add an exponential trend line. It's known that viscosity can be modelled as an exponential relationship, but we're not just going to add a trend line between these three points. What we're going to do is extrapolate the data, meaning we're going to extend the relationship in this direction, and we're going to extend the relationship in this direction. Now I want this graph to go from zero degrees to 100 degrees, so I need to extend the trend line backwards by 40 degrees, and I need to extend the trend line forwards by 25 degrees. Now the way that we do this is if we right click on one of our data points and select add trend line. As mentioned, we're going to model this as an exponential relationship. And down here under forecast, we can set the forward forecast to 25 to go from 75 to 100 and the backward forecast to 40 to go from 40 degrees back to zero degrees. Like so. So now visually we can see what the viscosity is at any different temperature. So at zero degrees as an example, the viscosity is going to be around 330. But we can actually go one step further in order to make our results more accurate than just reading them from this graph. So if we right click on our trend line and go to format trend line this time, we can check the box down here that states display equation on chart. Now what we have is an equation that represents that relationship. And that equation states that y equals 332.47 e to the minus 0.035x. Now just to make it a little clearer what this means, the x, or the variable on our x-axis, is temperature. 
and the y, the variable on our y-axis, is our viscosity. Therefore, if we input any value of temperature in degrees C here, we'll be able to calculate the kinematic viscosity here. So let's do one of these as an example. Let's say, for example, we want the kinematic viscosity at 20 degrees. Now we could read this from the graph and we could say that it's somewhere just above 150 millimeters squared per second. But if we want to calculate that more accurately, then we can do so because we have the formula 332.47 times the exponential of minus 0 0.035 times the temperature. Well, the temperature we're going to use is 20 degrees. So we can see that a more accurate answer for the viscosity at 20 degrees is 165.1 millimeters squared per second. You could just as easily input this formula into your calculator, but I just wanted to include a calculation on here for demonstration purposes. So let's see how the graph that we've produced there compares with an actual data sheet for 10W40 synthetic oil. Okay, so I've modified some of the scales here to make this a little bit easier to see. But on the left hand side we have our kinematic viscosities from experiment. And on the right hand side we have the kinematic viscosities from the material data sheets. And we also have a representation of how the density changes with temperature. So the first observation is that at 0 degrees C from the chart on the material data sheet, the kinematic viscosity is actually closer to 800. So our value is just under half that value. But as we move to higher temperatures, our results actually become more accurate. So at 20 degrees C, as an example, from the data sheet, we see a kinematic viscosity of just over 200. Well, we've just calculated that value from our experiment as 165. So the order of magnitudes are relatively close, even though the exact figure is not 100% accurate. If we look at 40 degrees C from the material data sheet, we see a kinematic viscosity of around 100 or perhaps just below 100. And from our experiment, we found that value to be 82 in the top left hand corner. At 55 degrees C from the material data sheet, we can see that the viscosity is probably somewhere in the order of 50, and from our experiment, we found that to be 48. So it appears that at temperatures above 20 degrees C, our experiment has given us relatively accurate results. In order to improve this graph further, what we would need to do is conduct some further viscosity experiments at lower temperatures and that would probably require us to use the Redwood 2 viscometer. But what this does demonstrate is that we are able to generate relatively accurate results using experimental data. Now some of these discrepancies could be as a result of different manufacturers of different oils. So it could be down to the material itself, or it could be down to experimental error. Perhaps the Redwood viscometer wasn't cleaned sufficiently, there may have been some residue at the orifice which affected the flow rate. However, there is also another factor which shouldn't be overlooked. Here we are on the Wikipedia page for the temperature dependence of liquid viscosity. And what I wanted to draw your attention to further down the page is that there's a number of different models that can be used to represent this relationship between temperature and viscosity. The model that we've chosen to use is the exponential model. But as we scroll down the page, we can see that there's numerous different models which can be used to model this relationship. Now the reason there's so many different models is because different fluids behave in different ways. In a later tutorial, we're going to be comparing Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids, and these relationships influence the best mathematical model that should be used in order to model the viscosity of the fluid at different temperatures. The exponential model is just one such model.
In the next video, we're going to extend this method and we're going to look at how we can use our data in order to determine dynamic viscosities, which are often used in calculations involving pressures and pressure losses. So it's a useful parameter to be able to determine from our experimental results.